What greater sacrifice can we make than that of our time and our effort, the things that seem to, to trickle through our fingers so quickly as our lives pass by like sands falling through an hourglass. Our time is precious every single minute of it. Yet so often it feels like we squander it. We look back and wonder, where did the time go? How's it passed? just so quickly. And it seems that each and every year it passes by so much more quickly than the last. So that sacrifice of our time and of our effort perhaps is one of the, the greatest things we can give to our fellow human beings and also to God himself. But then we have the greater sacrifice. The sacrifice of Christ our Redeemer. The last few weeks we've been considering his work when we've been considering where we find ourselves in life with all the ups and downs that very often we experience. Yes, the happiness we often experience, but often mixed up with that, that mixed cup of, well, as it was described in some places, even as curse for things we find in, in our lives and the experiences that we have. But we're reminded again today that Christ is our Redeemer. Christ is the one who bought back our birthright of blessing, a blessing which in the beginning was for each and every one of us, and which through our first human parents we lost for a time. Christ has bought that back. He has redeemed it for us. We're also reminded that he is the eternal Son of God. Maybe if you've been looking at your catechism question for this week in the order of service, just after the call to worship, you will have noticed the point as it's made there. The Christ is the eternal Son of God, one who became a man and continues to be God and man, two aspects of him or two natures, though vested in one person. We remember his work and the work we do for his kingdom in telling others about him. His being both God and man, and that being laid out for us to convince us by faith, reminds us that we aren't just dealing with a work of just a man. We're dealing with the work of God himself in redeeming ourselves to him. In that blessing that God wants to pour out to each of us. And so it's good that we're mindful of that when we think about that work that we do for him, especially in telling others about him. Today, a little bit later, we'll um, repeat some presentations that were made on Wednesday night as we celebrate new Queen's men. May they also be King's men, men of faith, following Christ the King. The BB, Boys Brigade, motto and emblem of an anchor is very much founded in all the work they've been doing for years now in finally getting to this stage of becoming, with that high uh, honour of becoming Queen's Men. But the BB motto and the emblem comes from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 about the blessings of God of which we've already spoken. When Hebrews 6 verse 19 we read this, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and and steadfast, a hope that goes into heaven where Jesus has gone before us. The anchor, the emblem of the Boys Brigade, is a symbol, even in Scripture, of that hope that we have because of Christ who went before us into heaven and all that he has purchased for us by means of, or for the purpose of, the blessings of God. We have that hope that is sure and steadfast, the motto of the Boys Brigade, it is sure and steadfast for two reasons. First of all, because of that promise that God gave that we believe in faith, and then the fact that he backed it up with an oath that he would do this. <coughs> he would provide us with those blessings that he promised to us. And that, of course, has been completely paid for by our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that one who has gone before us. So the anchor is a symbol of that hope, one that is sure and steadfast. It's a thing of faith 
is the thing of hope, and hopefully it extends to into the love and the service that we perform. And our new Queen's men have certainly performed great service in respect of our community, the church, and of God's own kingdom itself. Now, when we're talking about symbols and emblems, I've been asked recently about stoles. This thing around my neck here, this white thing, is of course a stole. And different stoles are used at different times of the year. Very often during communion time or baptisms, and especially in this time of Easter, when we think about Christ and his resurrection, white is very often used to represent the purity and the holiness of Christ himself and the sacraments that he uh, uh, brought forward for the church to make good use of as a means of grace. But I've been asked with regards to this particular stall, I don't know if Alan can maybe zoom in on the, the picture here on the left breast of this stall. Can you manage that for the folks upstairs and for the folks who might be watching this a little bit later? I'll try and stand still to the best of my ability. Will that help? Have you managed? Well done. What's this picture about? on this otherwise white stole. It's a pelican. Does anybody know much about pelicans? It's your chance to say something if you wish. What do you know about pelicans, usually in the wild? <coughs> and domesticated as well, actually. In some parts of the world, they'll actually put a, uh, a wee collar on the leg of the pelican, or even around the neck of the pelican, and a rope. So they'll let it go diving for fish, when it comes back up, they'll bring it into the boat and they'll remove the fish from its gullet. It has a crop underneath its neck here, which is within which it stores uh, fish for eating itself, but also taking back to its young. That does not move too much for you there, Alan. If you see in the picture, we here have the picture of this pelican in the nest with a number of its young underneath and what looks like blood coming from its breast. This particular picture is known as Pelican in Her Piety. That's the official name for it. And it dates back to probably the second or third century AD. The early Christian church made much of that particular emblem in <coughs> signifying the work of Christ to his church. The reality is that the, the pelican, when it's finished feeding its, or, or got towards the end of feeding its young, would press its crop down onto its breast to let the last of the fish come out for the young to be able to eat. If you've seen birds doing that wonderful thing of regurgitating food, it sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> the Sunday morning service as well. The way they regurgitate their food for their young, the pelican does that as well, but it would push its crop down onto its breast and out would come the last remains of the food, often with blood involved as well. But the... Um, the way that came into the Christian ideas, particularly at the start of its use in the, the second or third century, was with the idea of the pelican somehow looked like it was pecking its own breast to feed its young of its own blood. And the connection was made with the idea of Christ himself providing sustenance to his own children, the church, <coughs> by means of his own blood. It looks like blood. And Christ's sacrifice was very much of blood. The blood that purchased for us all the blessings of God. <coughs> and so with that in mind, what better reason do we have to praise him all day long and to remember those blessings that have, of God that have been purchased for us by a redeemer, by means of his blood. <coughs> 